E. Local music mashup. For the first three Thursdays of every month, sit back, relax, and vibe out as we showcase Guam's local talent through their video submissions. Tune in for Local Music Mashup on KUAM TV 8 at 6.30 p.m. and TV 11 at 7.30 p.m. Or catch it on KUAM digital platforms. You're not going to want to miss this. Local Music Mashup is brought to you by Burger King. Be your way. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Itano Program. Cars Plus, drive home in a brand new 2021 Hyundai Palisade equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain limited warranty. Call 477-7807 or visit carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Now on primetime, the Guam OPA shining a light on port payouts, findings from the first in a series of audits coming up. A tragic end to a search for a missing spear fisherman, the story from Pago Bay. And a local hotel is targeted by thieves and vandals. Hoppin' and good evening, I'm Adriana Cotero. We began with the breaking story as police and medics are responding to a report of a shooting in the village of Agate. We are still waiting for more information, but here's what we know. There was a report of a shooting at a home along San Francisco Street. A man possibly in his 30s was injured from multiple gunshot wounds. Agents from GPD's criminal investigation section have been activated. Once we get more information, we will pass it along as this is a developing story. The Guam Office of Public Accountability has released the first in a series of audits looking into how the Port Authority settled and reinstated nine former employees. All nine are back with the agency after their cases were resolved with the Civil Service Commission. Peter Santos reports. The first audit report released today focused on an employee identified only as Employee Q. According to the findings, as a result of this particular employee's termination lawsuit, the port paid a total of $542,275 in back wages, Medicare tax, retirement contribution, attorney's fees, and legal cost and interest. We also found that there were some things that the port did that we thought we should point out to the port and to the government uh, the Guam legislature in the hopes of uh, attending to it. One is that um, they found that the performance evaluations for 2012 and 20, 2011 and 2012 were not signed by the um, general manager and under the uh, port personnel rules and regulations the personal evaluation doesn't go into effect until it's certified by the general manager. But according to the audit report, the uncertified performance evaluations or increments were included in the back pay calculations. The incumbent board management decided that um, it was going to give the maximum increment per, per year. And um, we thought that it should be the, that there should be a standard and that um, though the employee had had an outstanding evaluation for the three prior years, two of them had not been certified by a general manager. According to the audit, the OPA found significant deficiencies in the port's calculations, which resulted in overpayments of at least $95,000 in back wages and $18,000 in interest for a total of $114,000 in overpayments. Among the findings, the OPA noted that legal remedies to settle this employee's case were executed without seeking the board's approval and a 6% interest charge was paid to the employee without any court-ordered requirement, negotiated terms, and proper calculation. Rather than doing the 6%, we thought that what the uh, port management should have done was negotiated uh, an interest um, because the law says uh, maximum 6%. The port should have uh, negotiated an interest lower than what was given the 6%. According to the report, the port general manager disagreed with the majority of the audit findings and recommendations. And late this afternoon, the port requested the AG's office conduct a review of the OPA audit to provide legal guidance on whether any post actions will be required. 
Port GM Roy Respicho stating, quote, Our management position remains firm in that we acted in accordance with the law, the PAG's personnel rules and regulations, and with the PAG board's authority, as well as Civil Service Commission, Superior Court, or Supreme Court orders whenever such orders are applicable to any of these personnel cases. Respicho added that, quote, Moreover, our management team acted under the advice and guidance by the port's in-house counsel in the development of the settlement templates. We therefore maintain our disagreement with the OPA's findings, end quote. For Guam's News Network, I'm Peter Santos. A resolution by the Republican minority to amend the standing rules prompted a lengthy delay in today's legislative session. Senator Tello Taitui moved to place on the agenda a resolution that would give all senators a vote in who was hired as executive director. Currently, that's the sole authority of the Rules Committee chairperson, Vice Speaker Tina Munya Barnes. She hired the governor's policy advisor, Carla Branch, who is also a former legislative executive director. On the motion... It is on the motion, un, Madam not Speaker, debatable. I object. This is a, a, a committee on rules resolution, Madam Speaker, right. and there is a process. So there's an I objection, object. yeah. Point, on the point motion of information, to place, it's not debatable, pardon? Yeah, po point of information, Madam Speaker, this is not a committee on rules. This is for the body, a resolution for the body. It is clearly stated in the resolution that it is a resolution for the body and not given to the committee on rules. Right. Madam Speaker, with all due respect, I'd like for a moment's recess so I can confer with legal in reference to the motion that was made and asked for a reconsideration of that motion, Madam Speaker, right. if I may. What was supposed to be a one-minute recess stretched out until the Speaker announced a recess until late this afternoon to give time to consult with legal counsel. The resolution would also create a legal bureau within the legislature and authorize the minority to hire its own legal counsel within the office. When senators reconvened, they did not take up the resolution immediately. Instead, they moved on to Senator Jim Moylan's bill to push, ba push back the scheduled 50-cent minimum wage increase by one year. Senator Amanda Shelton successfully tacked on an amendment to delay the March 1st implementation by just six months instead. Moylan moved for the vote, and the bill passed 8-6. to six. Voting no were Speaker Terlahi, Senators Amanda Shelton, Joe San Augustine, Clint Rogel, Pito Terlahi, and Joanne Brown. Senators then began debate on Bill 11 that requires legislation of approval to extend a public health emergency, but it was cut short. Session recessed till tomorrow after Senator Tello Taitui asked for time to review a letter she just received from public health. The letter titled Collaborative Testimony was signed by multiple frontline agency heads that states that the bill threatens their COVID-19 response by undermining their ability to respond. Debate on the bill resumes tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Another $181 million in federal unemployment assistance is available in the Guam Department of Labor account. $97 million is allocated for pandemic unemployment assistance and $84 million for federal pandemic unemployment compensation. GDOL says a new batch of PUA and FPUC payments worth almost $22 million should be in accounts by the end of the week or early next week. Meanwhile, there's been no official announcement yet, but Governor Lulian Guerrero has hinted about declaring PCOR 3 as early as Friday. But Labor Director David De La Sola says if and when the governor further eases restrictions, PUA claimants will have to submit proof that they're actively seeking work. You're going to have to start uh, essentially job searching. And that's a whole new dynamic that uh, basically we've never implemented because we've always been pretty much in a shutdown, right. not a recovery mode with this PUA program. So uh, there's a requirement to look for like three jobs a week and you have to upload that on your weekly uh, uh, claim process and uh, which is going to change and require a lot more effort on the claiming part. Right. GDOL says a total of $560 million in assistance has been paid out since last June and more than $54 million in the last months alone. A tragic end to a search for a missing spear fisherman. Peter Santos has been following the story since it broke last night. Here's more from the scene. The search started Monday night for a 53-year-old spear fisherman in the Pago Bay area. Guam Fire Department spokesperson Kevin Riley. According to um, the resident here at Pago Bay, uh, he was he went out about 4:30 and uh, failed to come back in. At about seven o'clock, uh, they made the notification to 911. Uh, at that time, his family members were called, and uh, they also confirmed that he wasn't at, at home either. Residents in the area told GFD that the man was an experienced fisherman who frequented the Pago Bay area to go spear fishing, usually returning before nightfall. He didn't carry diving lights for nighttime fishing, which prompted residents to report that he hadn't returned to shore. Upon activation, interagency collaborative search efforts began. We had rescue one, two, and three, like I said. Uh, we also have our rescue boat out there, the Coast Guard 45, 
and we also have HSC 25 uh, searching up behind, outside the reef line. Um, we just came in, our units came in from doing a, a search of the channel uh, and inside Pago Bay using jet skis. And currently right now we're gonna do more of a shallow water search because the current is pushing inward. So we're gonna do shallow water search and along the reef line. We also have engine company number nine from the Georgia fire station and they'll be assisting too on foot uh, searching searching the shore. The search continued until 2 a.m. but due to lighting and weather conditions was delayed until sunrise. As Guam Fire resumed their search, units from the Guam Police Department Special Operations Division joined in the efforts. This morning, KOM was first on the scene where GFD spokesperson Riley provided the tragic update. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately we have some bad news this morning. Um, as uh, just after 7.30, um, our units were able to retrieve the body of the missing fisherman. It's located about uh, 75 yards in from the mouth of the channel inside Pago Bay. According to Chalampago Mayor Jesse Gogui, the waters of the Chalampago Bay area are, quote, treacherous this time of year. The mayor also extending sincere condolences and prayers for the family of the fisherman. According to Riley, the identity of the fisherman will not be released until the Guam Police Department conducts their investigation and next of kin are notified. For Guam's News Network, I'm Peter Santos. Still to come on prime time, the latest with containing COVID. That and more on the way, be informed. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Albo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. How do you dare? You chip away at what's been built because you can do better. How do you dare? You chase away wrongs to make room for what's right. You, how do you dare? You stand while they sit and scream when they are silent. You combine your strengths to reject their weakness. You step up, stand out, and shape a new point of view. How do you dare? This is how you dare. Introducing the all-new Elantra. KUAM News. Winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. The Wyndham Garden Guam has been temporarily closed since August, and unfortunately, thieves and vandals have noticed. KOAM speaks with hotel management on the link this morning regarding the recent robbery. They ransacked the place. Um, they know that our hotel has been closed because of uh, COVID, and we decided to use it for renovations. The hotel property was targeted by three men early Monday morning between 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. The trio broke into the hotel and stole equipment, cash, foreign currency, and several items, adding up to an at least $5,000 loss, according to Hotel Director of Sales and Marketing, Valerie Bloss. The rooms, however, have been cleared of all furniture for renovations. The beds are gone, the furniture is gone, so there's nothing in the rooms for them to steal. So this, they decided to focus their attention on our, our admin offices, our gift shop, as well as the coffee shop that we do have present. And they were able to get their hands on some cash that was in our boss's safe, some tools, some power equipment. 
The crime was caught in surveillance video. One of the suspects was wearing a blue hoodie, khaki shorts, black fila slides, and a red bandana, which he later changed into a fila shirt over his head. A second individual wore a black hoodie, cap and mask, gray pants, and black tennis shoes with white trim. The third male suspect was wearing a black shirt, gold necklace, blue bandana, and white basketball shorts with black stripes, and the number 06 on the left leg. Bloss says they reported the incident to the Guam Police Department, who has since dusted the area for fingerprints. She adds that community members have come forward identifying the individuals. In the meantime, the hotel is beefing up their 24-hour security presence in case the thieves plan to return. We just want everybody to be cautious, stay diligent, be alert that people are out trying to make a quick buck. So just be careful, everybody. As of news time, an arrest has yet to be made. If you have any information regarding the incident, you are urged to call GPD Dispatch at 472-8911 or leave a tip anonymously at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. Husband and wife Joshua and Sylvia Regis were sentenced in federal court this afternoon to individual probation periods. The couple pled guilty to attempted possession of meth with intent to distribute. Five years ago, information was filed in the couple's federal criminal case, and within two days, both Joshua and Sylvia Regis pled guilty. According to their plea agreements, on June 26, 2015, a package was received at the U.S. Postal Office in Guam, addressed to J.P. Regis at Nestimbo Dededo residence. Postal Inspector Richard Kaufman suspected the package contained narcotics. As stated in court documents, a canine alerted the package. A search warrant was utilized to open the package, which contained approximately 15 grams of meth, which was 96% pure. The feds replaced the meth with sham and a tracking device inside, and then placed the package back in the mail system for delivery. Three days later, on June 29, 2015, Postal Inspector Kaufman delivered the package, leading to the arrest of Joshua Paul Regis and Sylvia Leon Guerrero Regis. Further stated in court documents, the feds retrieved Western Union receipts indicating that a week prior, Sylvia sent $200 to a Barbara M. Hunt in California. Then on June 28, 2015, Joshua sent $741 to Hunt to purchase the drugs. Joshua consented to a search of his cell phone, which revealed the husband and wife had received prior packages containing meth from California, and that the duo were supplying and selling grams of meth to others on Guam. Both defendants have accepted responsibility, and this was noted in court this afternoon. The Office of Probation and the government recommended the low end of the sentencing guidelines for Joshua of 30 months or two and a half years in federal prison, followed by a one-year supervised release term. As for Sylvia, it was recommended she serve a one-year probation period for providing substantial assistance to the feds. Chief Judge Francis Tidinko Gatewood ultimately sentenced Sylvia to one year of probation and Joshua to three years of probation, with no fines imposed. While holding back tears, Joshua apologized to the court, his boss, his wife, and kids. In court, he stated, quote, It was a struggle to get to where I am today, and I wouldn't have done it without my family, the court, and my job, unquote. Sylvia, also crying, addressed the court, pleading to not be taken away from her children. She stated, quote, I am sorry to you, to my family, and most of all to my kids for the wrong choices I have made. I tried to tell them you can make wrong choices but turn your life around, and I have shown them that since day one when I made the wrong choice. And I'm trying my best to be the best mom I can be for them, unquote. It was stated in court the couple has four children together. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero received the updated guidance on the reopening of bars today from Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association's President Mary Rhodes. However, Adeloupe did not say specifically if drinking establishments would be allowed to open should the governor decide to move to PCOR 3 on Friday. Communications Director Crystal Paco San Augustine said the proposal is now under review, but clarified that at this point, under consideration with the transition into PCOR 3, is increased occupancy limits for some business activities. Rhodes spoke about the guidelines in an earlier interview with KUAM. I know that the Economic Advisory Group will be meeting as a group tomorrow, and um, the uh, person in charge of that is Ken Cook, and they did reach out to me last night uh, just to make sure that we're ready to submit a draft plan at least. And so I know that they're planning to meet with the governor on it next week. Um, so I did get confirmation on that. What I don't want to see happening is, you know, we, we should give the business owners some time to prepare. Mm. I know that when announcements have been made, it's like effective the very next day or in a couple of days. And we have time to get businesses to prepare. In an interview Monday, the governor was noncommittal about allowing bars to reopen immediately without the with the declaration of PCOR 3. 
In an effort to ration Guam's current allotment of the vaccine, the Vaccine and Antiviral Prioritization Policy Committee is prioritizing those due for their second dose. Out of Loop Communications Director Crystal Palco, San Augustine. For the remainder of the month of February, all vaccines will be prioritized for those due for their second dose, be it the Moderna vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine. And so that's what's going to happen these next few weeks, especially as we are expecting several hundred school-based employees who will be due for their COVID-19 second dose vaccine as early as Saturday. And so that will take us well into the end of the month before we receive our next dose, next month's dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Next week, public health will be authorized to place their next order for the month of March. A total of 21,360 doses are expected to arrive within the first week. Meanwhile, the VAPPC has authorized Rexel Drugs and Kmart to receive vaccines. Each will receive 200 doses. Public health as well as the Guam National Guard continue with vaccination clinics. As a reminder, they are prioritizing those due for their second dose. Village-based vaccinations will continue on Friday at the Aga Gym from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. A total of 100 doses will be provided. In addition, the National Guard will continue operations this week at the UOG Calvo Field House for Operation Liberate Guam up until Saturday, February 20th from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. A limited number of walk-ins will be accepted. However, eligible individuals are highly encouraged to make appointments. You can register online by scanning the QR codes. Stay tuned. Up next, Dave Delgado with Sports. Keep it here. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. You can't test this. Introducing the new contactless debit card from Bank of Hawaii. You can't test this. For a safer and faster way to pay. You can't test this. Just tap, pay, and be on your way. It's that easy. And we're the only local bank that will be mailing a new contactless card to every debit card holder. Because when it comes to our commitment to helping you bank safely, as the song says, you can't touch this. Bank of Hawaii, welcome to tomorrow. Can't touch this. We get it. Living to the fullest is tough during COVID-19. You don't need to do it alone, and everyone needs a hand right now. We are here. Feeling overwhelmed? Call 647-8833 and let's talk. Mangegiham is a project of Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Double filet sandwich for double the flavor. Just in time for Lent for a limited time. Served all day. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers, and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. Dave Delgado here with Team Matau Captain Jason Cunliffe. Tell us what uh, you've been up to with the Matau and how's training been in uh, preparation for some future competitions. Off day, Dave. Uh, thanks for having me on. 
man, you know, the training with uh, the team has been excellent. Um, you know, we got a, a new group of guys in that have moved up from the under 20s. Uh, so we've got some young boys really pushing the older group. Um, the environment's really good. You know, everyone's really hungry and, uh, and just really, you know, embracing the grind. You know, we're out there four days a week. Um, on the field and then we go into the gym uh, immediately after and then we also have gym sessions on Saturday so you know I couldn't ask uh, for a better start to the year in terms of the effort that the boys are really bringing to the table um, and again with Carl Dot at the helm really guiding us along the way you know our future is, is very bright uh, you know we don't have matches until June but you know that's not stopping us from putting in the work and the GFA has done a great job in keeping everybody active when it comes to the national teams and opening doors and, and making sure that the athletes there stay on top of their game um, obviously with COVID uh, we've been able to make sure that our protocols been in place that's keeping everybody safe um, like you said the national teams are training so it's not just the men's it's uh, the women's as well both age groups as well in terms of the U17s um, and the U20s so GFA has done a good job of ensuring that we're out there and uh, able to put the work in that we need to to get the results that we need on the field. GFA also hooking up with a company in Korea with some high tech technology to, to monitor uh, the training of the uh, members of Mattel and, and tracking you guys to make sure that you guys stay in peak performance. Our technical department is very strong. Um, our technical director, uh, Coach Kim, is uh, very experienced, very highly uh, rated coach in, in and of its own right, but also in terms of, um, you know, his relationships and the people he knows from the football world. So he was able to uh, get us a nice deal with this fit together company, which obviously allows um, our, our uh, strength and conditioning trainer, he's our, he he's our head of our high performance, um, Coach Pavel, to monitor um, exactly the output that guys are having in training, um, which allows him to better utilize in terms of the load that we have in training on the field, as well as in the gym. Um, if there is any niggles or anything like that, it allows him to really get all the, the details so that he has all the information he needs. Seeing the benefits from uh, the younger players continuously moving up in the ranks and, and making it to uh, the Mattel now uh, speaks volumes for what uh, the GFA has put into uh, the national team program. You know, after Gary White left, we had, you know, uh, a little bit of a lull. I think there was about two years there where we, we weren't playing any matches um, and the player pathway was a little bit um, broken down, so to speak. So when Carl Dodd came in, he really did a great job of establishing a proper player pathway, um, U17s, U20s, and he's working on the U23s. So it feeds into the Mattel so that, you know, uh, no one's resting on their laurels. Nobody's comfortable. You always got fresh guys coming in, pushing you for your spot, making sure that you earn it every day. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, we've got a great group. Um, the environment's amazing. These kids are pushing, the older guys are pushing, and, and everyone's enjoying the process, you know, and that's all I could ask for as a captain is, is having guys come in hungry to get better, um, hungry to push each other. And while we compete on the field and we really, you know, I mean, it's, it's tough, it's tough, it's physical. You know, we're competing 100%. Guys want my spot. You know, other guys are fighting for their spots. Um, so that's all I could ask for. And I'm really, really excited about the future. You're making sure it's coming full circle because as a coach, you're giving back to the kids, you're sharing your knowledge, and, and you're helping these uh, young soccer players uh, develop their game and, and making sure that when they do step on the pitch again for competition, that they're going to bring it every time they suit up and lace up uh, on their soccer pitch. That's my job. Closing our Harmon and Dedded Oak branches marks the end of a chapter, but we want to reassure you that this is not the end. It is us embodying the philosophy that founded us and still grounds us today. It's the reason why we are the People's Bank. It's because as times change and our community grows, so will we. So it's not the end. It's the start of something new. So long, nacho fries. Whenever Taco Bell takes them off the menu, he can't escape the craziness. Nacho fries. 
Escape your cravings with our nacho fries box. Run to Taco Bell. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday wishes going out to Kaden Chisato. We love you so much and hope you enjoy your special day coming from grandma and grandpa and all your family. And Kaylee Jade Menabusin, who celebrates birthday number 10 today. Daddy and family say they love you so much. And belated birthday wishes going out to Cohen Blaze Pablo, who was born on the 13th. Happy blessed birthday number two to our grandson. May you enjoy your special day and may the Lord bless you with many more to come. But, but, we love you always, say the family. Anthony Joel about the Jones, happy birthday to you. And Anthony Joel celebrates birthday number six. Happy birthday to our Hanchum. May the Lord bless you on a special day with many more to come, says your family. Roel Deshaun Shanko Hortisola, born on the 15th. Happy 16th birthday to you. We love you so much and are blessed to have you in our lives. We hope your birthday is filled with lots of love, laughter, and happiness. Love, hugs, and kisses from the entire family. Te'ani Giselle, happy birthday number 10 to our baby. You are our heart and our world, but most of, our, most of all, you are the greatest Valentine's gift ever. We love you always and forever, say Mom Antoinette and Papa Eddie. Who guides a how to Dwayne Tovas from your loving family. Dwayne was born on Valentine's Day. February the 14th. Happy birthday, Dwayne. And happy birthday number 82 to Dad. Known to everyone else as Eddie Flores Senior. We thank you for all you do for us, most especially the love you have for our Lord Jesus Christ. After 62 years of marriage with Mom, you both stand firm in your love for each other and your faith. God bless and have a beautiful birthday with more to come. Love Faith, kids, grands, and great grands. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. That's going to do it for us here on Prime Time. Thank you for watching. Have a good night and be safe. Health Check is presented by Island Cancer Center. Less is not always more.